Hi everyone, I'm Rachel with Limble's product team. Today, we'll be talking about how to add assets into Limble from the desktop and mobile apps. Generally speaking, assets are the things you'll be performing work on in Limble. Adding assets should be one of the first things you do when setting up your Limble account, because almost all other features and work done in Limble will depend on having assets. If you're looking to add a large batch of assets at one time, check out our video about bulk importing into Limble. Without further ado, let's get started. To begin, I need to get to the Manage Assets page. There are a couple of ways to do this. From the Global Dashboard page, you can click on your location, and from the New page, select Assets. You can also select the Locations tab, click on your desired location, and using the caret icon, expand your options and click on Assets. Now that we're on the Manage Assets page, select Add an Asset. Next, we need to name the asset. As a best practice, we recommend giving your asset a unique name that will make it easy to differentiate from other assets. For this example, I'll add a Coolmore two-door refrigerator and name it Coolmore Fridge-001. Adding numbers is a great differentiator, especially if you have multiple of the same asset. Once you've named your asset, click Add. It's as simple as that. You've successfully created your first asset. Now that we've created our first asset, let's add some additional information. Limble offers category, make, and model as default fields, so I'll fill those in. Limble is a truly customizable software that allows you to add custom fields to track almost any information you can think of. For my fridge, I'll want to add the serial number, owner manual, and initial cost. To add custom fields, click on the name. You'll be taken to the asset card. Select Add Field. In the new pop-up, make sure Create New Field is selected. I'm going to add the serial number first, so I'll name this Serial Number. Next, we need to select a field type. Field types cannot be changed once they've been created, so be careful when deciding which field type you need. I'll want to use the text type in case the serial number includes any letters. Then click Create. Now that it's created, I'll populate the field. Now we have a new custom field. Next, I'm going to add the user manual. Many of our customers love this feature because they can easily access the digital manual without having to search for a physical copy. I'll name the field Product Manual, select Document as the field type, and click Create. Then I'll upload the product manual. The last custom field I'm going to create is Initial Cost. Many of our customers like to add the initial cost or value to help track asset depreciation or determine when an asset may need to be retired. To do that, I'll name the field Initial Cost and choose Currency as my field type. Keep in mind that these asset fields will be available for future use. As you add additional assets, you can select from custom fields you've created to build out new asset information. The last thing I'll do in the asset card is upload a photo. This is another way to help differentiate your assets. To do that, I'll click on the photo icon and upload. And that's it. We've successfully added an asset with a lot of great information we can use moving forward. As you're setting up your assets in Limble, you may need to add multiple assets of the same kind or similar assets that share a lot of the same information. This is where copying an existing asset will save you time. To do this, select Add an Asset. Instead of creating a blank asset, I'll make sure to select a copy of an existing asset. Now I'll have the option to choose from all of my assets. If you have more than one location on your account, you can pull information from any of them to create your new asset. To get the one I want, I'll select Coolmore Fridge-001 and update the name to be Coolmore Fridge-002 instead of the copy. Then I'll click Add. Now I have an identical asset and didn't need to repopulate any new fields. It's also important to note that doing this will pull over any associated PMs, but it will not pull over any work history from the original asset. The other way to copy assets is by hovering and selecting the Duplicate button. You can also do this for assets that aren't identical but share most of the same information. So if I had another Coolmore fridge that was a slightly different model but shared basically all of the same information, I could just copy the asset and swap out the few custom fields as needed. The last thing you want to consider when adding your assets is asset hierarchy. 
Having an asset hierarchy helps keep things organized and is important when considering work and the relationship between parent and child assets. Let's assume that at the zoo, I have a Coolmore fridge in the aquarium area and one in the safari area. Creating an asset hierarchy will not only keep everything organized, but will make assets easier to identify for work requests, and it can help your reporting to drill down into specific areas or assets that are using a lot of resources. I'm going to add the safari and aquarium as two new assets, and also create animal care areas for both since that's where our fridges will be stored. You can see that none of these assets are in any hierarchy yet. I'm going to drag the animal care areas into the aquarium and safari, and then drag fridge one and two into their respective places. You can also create a hierarchy by creating a child asset in the asset card, which we'll cover a little later. Now we have a good hierarchy set up and lots of room to build it out. Limble provides flexibility to build out your hierarchy to be as little or as expanded as you want, so you can have several layers of parent and child asset relationships. The asset card has a ton of easily accessible information about work history, associated vendors and parts, and more. Let's take a look at what you can find in the asset card. In the PMs tab, you'll see all of the PMs or planned maintenance tasks associated with this asset. The work orders tab is similar to the PMs tab. You can see open and completed work orders associated with this asset and even start a work order from here. The Parts tab is where you can see which parts are associated with the asset and even manually add them here. This helps you and your team to easily know which parts are needed to perform work on the asset and how many are generally used. The Vendors tab is where you'll find associated vendors with your asset. This can be vendors who sold you an asset or ones you hire to perform labor on it. The Log tab shows you all activity that has happened to the asset. You can view the log and add additional records. The Reports tab shows important statistics related to the asset. You can filter this information by a date range and export the information for reporting. The Final tab is Children. This allows you to create and view child assets. Associating assets is important to stay organized, but will also be beneficial for reporting and plays a role in passing data between parent and children assets and tasks. Now that you have a lay of the land, let's take a look at this on mobile. We keep things similar between desktop and mobile to make things as easy as possible, so this should be straightforward. Log into the Limble app on your mobile device or tablet. Scroll down to the Others header and click on the Add an Asset button. As we did on desktop, we'll name the asset. Let's pretend this is a freezer, so I'll name this Coolmore Freezer-001. The main difference you'll see between your desktop options and the mobile app is that you have the option to choose the asset location if you have more than one on your account. I'll make sure to select the zoo. You'll still have the option to create a whole new asset or use an existing asset. I'll create a blank one here. We're at the asset card again and have the same functionalities we have in the desktop app. I'll add a new custom field for serial number by selecting add field and make sure to select create new field. I'll name it serial number and use the text category for my information type. I'll populate the field with the serial number and then exit the asset card. Now I can look up my asset and see that it's there with the other assets we've created at the zoo. Thanks so much for watching. If you have additional questions, visit our help center or reach out to your dedicated Limble CSM to learn more.